Welcome back to Slothbox, I'm Lyndon Dixon and a different video today but with all the stuff going on in Saudi Arabia you've got Joshua versus Ngannou which has saw again Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren matchroom in Queensbury uniting. Another, if you said it this time last year I don't think it's really I could, something I could have seen and I think those two men would agree as well but Turkey Al, -Al, -Al Sheikh, the guy who's um, the boxing man out in Saudi Arabia representing the PIF um made a really interesting point. He said a show he'd love to put on this year, 2024, is a Matchroom versus Queensbury show. Eddie Hearn versus Frank Boren. And they both shook on it. Now, that's something that's been spoke about over the years, saying that, you know, stable versus stable. Who's got the best one? Well, now, ladies and gents, it's time to find out. So I picked out a few fights, five fights, as if it was a card that would be happening. And, um... Yeah, it's really interesting when you look, when you compare the two stables. I tried to pick people that were of all but one are all at a similar stage in their career and therefore would make a great fight. But comment down below, let me know what who you would like to see in a fight on a card that would be Matchroom versus Queensbury, Hearn versus Warren. Who would you want to see on that card? What matchups would you make? But these are mine. The most obvious one would be Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua. A fight that us Brits and in general boxing fans globally have been screaming out for. But for one reason or another, duck or didn't duck, either one of them, we haven't seen it yet. And it will be a sporting travesty if we don't see it before either of those men's careers um, run out. Because at the end of the day, they're, you could argue they're past their peaks, but let's not see it when they're old men. Let's not see a Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. in 15 years. Let's do it now, boys. And I feel like this is a chance to get it on. Who do you think would win that one? But that would be definitely the, the headline for that card. It's both the biggest names in either of the stables. And yeah, a fight that it doesn't really need too much explaining. We'd all love to see. Now, the one fight that I picked, that I haven't really seen on mentioned online much, would be a real interesting one, in my opinion. From Matchroom, it's the boy Josh Warrington. Coming towards the end of his career now, has had many, many a successful nights, has done himself proud, has pretty much achieved what he wanted from the sport, and now is just ticking off boxes. And um, yeah, he lost to Lee Wood. Even though he's winning the fight, he got knocked out, and that's all that matters. But he sh I think he's making a comeback this year. Now... And one of my, I think I chose him as, it was even my prospect of the year, one to watch for this year, Nick Ball. Now picture that, ladies and gents. Josh Warrington against Nick Ball would be an outstanding fight, title on the line or not, no matter where it is, it could be in a phone booth for all it matters. Those two would just leave it there and it would be an absolute cracker. I'm already thinking of the fight now and it's not even happening. But Josh Warrington against Nick Ball, I feel like, they're obviously at opposite ends of their careers. Nick Ball's really coming into his own and Josh Warrington is on the way out. But no disrespect at all, he still has plenty left in the tank. You could see that from the Lee Wood performance. But they... It's awkward. I don't want to say similar styles, but they're both men that are aggressive fighters, front foot fighters. I know I'm saying all the cliches, but I think styles make fights and that fight would be... A beautiful one. I'd love to see it. There's no way it goes all 12 rounds. And yeah, let me know what, who you think would win out of that one. The next one I've got is an interesting one. Callum Smith from Matchroom just recently lost to Baturbiev. There is absolutely no shame in that. Against the Queensbury boy, Anthony Yard, who also lost to Baturbiev. So, I feel like that's a great matchup. I feel like even if this Hearn, Warren, Matchroom, Queensbury card don't happen, that's the fight I'd love to see next. They've both lost to Baturbiev. Let's. I feel like the Bivol fight isn't there for either of them. They're not going to rematch Baturbiev again. Who else really is there? Fight each other, please. I'd love to see that fight. Callum Smith against Anthony Yard. I real, really think that it's a flip of a coin. And that's why I picked that one for this one. So in the comments, you can let me know who you think would edge that one out. Or am I being an idiot? Is it completely one-sided? And I can't see it. The next one, Battle of the Prospects. Moses Atalma, the man that wants to break Mike Tyson's record of becoming the youngest heavyweight champion ever against Johnny Fisher. Took sort it took a very has taken a very different route in his career. Still a prospect, but it's going a lot slower than Mo Moses Atama. And that's not that he's going slow in his career. It's just Moses Atama is moving rapidly. And that's the aim. But 
I feel like even though Atama's moved fast and Fish has moved slower than Atama, they're at a very, very, very similar stage in their career. And I feel like, you know, it would sort of be the battle who's between the best heavyweight prospects in Britain. It, no way it's going the distance. Does Moses Atama have too much speed? Does Fisher have too much power? I mean, we haven't really seen Atama's um, chin tested yet. Will Johnny Fisher be the man to test it? I'd love to see that fight. Everyone loves a heavyweight fight, especially two young lads like that coming to leave it all in the ring. The next one, a bit of a, a rogue one, a rogue shout. It's Ammo Williams, the American prospect who was fighting in a couple of weeks, actually, on that Conor Ben card in Las Vegas, I think it is. Um, yeah, February 8th, that one, against... The sort of the Queensbury, well, one of the Queensbury golden boys, really, Hamza Shiraz. Now, Hamza Shiraz, his career definitely hasn't moved as fast as I would have liked it to. Not, And that's not any slight to him. I just really think that he's got a lot of talent and I would love to see him take it a lot further than it's currently being taken. But him against Damo Williams, it's a proper crossroads fight. Which way, what happens to the loser then? They've got to sort of build it back up a bit. But the winner, you beat a talented guy like the man opposite you. Would be very interesting to see what happens after that. I mean, Ammo Williams has got a big fight against... I forget the guy's name, but I know he's an undefeated guy with a similar record to Williams himself. And Hamza Shiraz would definitely be be keen to add a name like Ammo Williams to his resume. Now, after those fights, I've got a couple of questions for you. Who would win in the end? Herna Warren. Who would get the most wins on that card? The second couple of questions. Who would you like to see? Pick a matchroom fighter, pick a Queensbury fighter, Hearn versus Warren. What fight would you like to see on that card that the both men have shook on? So we should see it soon. I'm not saying in the next month. Jesus. But even the next year, year and a half, I think we're going to see a card like that. Especially with the way that Hearn and Warren are going. I mean, they're working together. I feel like it's such a good thing for the sport of boxing, or at least the British side of the sport. Because so many fights that we've sort of been screaming for, like... I feel like if this, you know, the those two uniting, if that had happened five years ago, we would, of course, have seen um, Fury Joshua by now. But at least it's happened. It's not, it's not too late. There's still plenty of good fights to make between both stables. And, um, yeah, it'd be... Imagine the build-up to that, Hearn versus Warren. Think of, think of how good the build-up to that would be. But, yeah, let me know in the comments who you would want to see. Who out of the people I said you think would win? Am I waffling? Take it easy. Stay safe. We've just hit 2,000 subscribers. It's going to be a big year for Slothbox. And yeah, as usual, we'll see you on the next one.